Hey there world, hey there internet, this is Tim, Tim the Bouncer, and it's July 15th, it's 2014, and this is my first ever vlog, yeah. I got, a friend of mine told me I should have a go at these, because apparently this is what all the cool kids are doing these days, so this is just going to be like a forum by which I'm going to tell some stories, talk about working out, talking about my, my work as a bouncer, used to work as a bodyguard, you know, got some old tales to tell, but uh, Got some grey hairs from it all too, but still in good shape, I think, <clears throat> you know, for a 38 year old. Well, only for a few more weeks actually, 10 and 39 this year, then it's a big 4-0 after that's a little scary, huh? <laughs> hey, but who wants to get any older? So, anyway, just to tell you a bit about myself, I, uh, as I said, I'm a bouncer in London. I work at uh, a fire at a uh, gay club around uh, down in Vauxhall. Probably half of you guys who are watching this will have seen me on the door at some point or another. I train at the Powerhouse in Islington, a massive, loud, sweaty gym with all the obnoxious people wandering around. Yeah, I'm one of those obnoxious people. But uh, uh, so I was going to use this channel to share stories, share tales, uh, maybe give you some nutrition guides, maybe give you some uh, workout guides. So yeah, click if you like, click like if you like, follow, and I'll be making some new videos soon. All right. Okay, this is Tim the Bouncer. It is July 30th, 2014. Thanks for all your comments on my last video. I'm glad everyone liked the workout video. Uh, keep the pervy comments down next time, though. You know, this uh, flattering though they are, they're a little creepy at the same time. I'm sure you all know who you are. All right, okay. I have had the weirdest night last night. You're not going to believe this. You're going to be a fan of I had this guy come to my door. He, like old bookish guy with a bow tie uh, just he uh, made the weirdest face at me just looked drawn and exhausted and he gave me this letter from this uh, cardinal in the church of England can you believe it some guy called Cardinal Wolven and this Wolven guy apparently has been doing this study a uh, historical study where he's trying to trace the lineage of some ancient Persian general called Mithras and my surname by the way is Mithranson pretty unique never heard anyone else with that and apparently it could be it, it, it apparently when I went down to see this uh, Cardinal Wolven guy at uh, the British Historical Society at 11 o'clock at night by the way dragged me down there at 11 o'clock at night but hey he's paying 200 quid so why do I care what hours he keeps I'm a bouncer anyway so I'm pretty much nocturnal but he told me that I am the last living descendant of this ancient Persian general. I am the end of his line. Creepy guy. Really creepy guy, this guy on the wall. And like, first of all, too young. Way too young. Like, 21. I've never seen a 21-year-old cardinal. You can't be a cardinal at 21. Tiny little guy. Really pale. Needs a tan. Way worse than I need a tan. But, like, really needed a tan. And uh, scared the hell out of me with all this, uh, like, nighttime, shady mystical mystical lineage stuff about this ancient general that then got worshipped as a god I mean what does that make me does that make me a demigod because I'm like his descendant I mean I know I look like a demigod but no I'm pretty sure I ain't a demigod so he asked me if I had any brothers or any children or any intention to have children and I told him no mate I'm gay <laughs> I'm gay I've got a boyfriend called Gus I'm going to ask him to marry me in a couple of weeks and we ain't never having kids uh, and then he started getting really creepy and started asking stuff like, what about sperm? What about sperm donations? What about surrogacy? What about insemination? And I'm like, no, mate, I don't want kids. I am the end, and I'm not going to have kids just to keep some 4,000-year-old dead bloke happy. All right? He didn't seem too happy about that. He gave me my money, he told me to get out of there, and he said Mithras would be very unhappy with me. And I'm like, he's 4,000 years in the past, mate. Mythos ain't gonna be upset about anything. Weird, weird fucking day. But hey, made 200 quid. Oh, hello again, internet. Yeah, it's Tim the Bouncer again. It's good to, to good to be back online. Yeah, thanks for all those comments on the last video about my cooking. Yeah, I know I can't cook, all right? But you gotta eat right if you wanna build the muscle, right? Okay, well, I got a bit of a weird one for you. A bit off topic, no workout stuff this time. I had another one of those strange night out, nights out last night. You remember, like, just over a week ago, that weird night I had with that cardinal and finding out that I'm 
like dead Persian nobility and that, all, all that crap. Well, on a follow up to that, this uh, this uh, this bloke called apparently some kind of knight, some Sir John de Montfort, gave me uh, sent me a letter and uh, invited me out for this like late night meal at this really really fancy place right in down right right downtown you know right on Oxford Circus like one of those places that you have to knock at a back door to get up to I've heard of it before you know I know the bouncer that actually I knew the bouncer that worked on the door and this restaurant is like no one no one could afford to eat there and I get an invite <laughs> an invite I haven't got a fucking shirt so I just put on like the cleanest white t-shirt I could and just pull my jacket up really tight you know <laughs> Probably the scruffiest looking bastard they've ever seen walk through that door. <laughs> but I got in there and I met there's this guy, no one else in the restaurant. No one. This place can't get a booking for love nor money and there's no one else there. And it's this this guy sitting at this table and he is he's younger than me, you know, like twenty five, smooth skin pale as anything and he had like one eye like was all white it was pretty gross actually it just like didn't know if we one eye was staring at you or not staring at you and he was dressed like someone out of a BBC costume drama you know frilly shirt and everything and he just looked totally out of place in London you know with the fashion capital of the world and he's living somewhere in the dark ages <laughs> So I thought, oh god, this is going to be some creepy affair, he's going to talk to me, he's going to, you know, go on about this whole, like, Mithras history stuff, and I'm just going to have to tell him to back off again, and it's going to be one of those weird things, but I sat down and talked to him for, like, a couple of minutes, he offered me a drink, he offered, showed me that I got to order something for the menu, fucking nicest, nicest food you ever heard, like, meat from, meat, meats from the most exotic locations, you know, I, I got myself a steak, of course, don't ever turn down a steak, free steak dinner, right? He didn't order anything though, he didn't say he wasn't hungry, he just spent the whole night drinking from this wine glass, it wasn't even wine, it was like some thick red liqueur or something, it looked like, like a strawberry crease or something, I have no idea. After five, like five minutes of talking to this guy though, you won't believe it, it's like we were best friends. Just after a couple of minutes, he just put me right at ease, and it's like, I've never felt so comfortable with someone. Just, like I liked someone so much, so quickly, you know? And I just told him everything. Just shared all my thoughts, my dreams, he was asking me all these questions about my life, and my career, and, you know, it's the same creepy questions as that Wolven guy the other night, like, are you going to have kids, are you going to get married, anything like that, but I'm like... No, but I didn't seem to mind from him. It's like he just had this presence about him. It's creepy when I think about it afterwards. How easily I uh, just spilled the beans to this guy. <laughs> Not that I've got any big secrets, but you know, I'm normally a pretty guarded fella. And when you get someone dressed like a fucking Renaissance fair reject starts talking to you at the most expensive restaurant in London that is somehow empty, you don't expect to suddenly start enjoying yourself. Strange. Anyway, halfway through the meal, some suited guy wanders in and walks up to him and, and says that some urgent matter has called, it has to be, it needs his attention. Strange enough, he called him Prince John. Prince John. <laughs> Never seen a member of the royal family looking like that. I'm pretty certain he's not a member of the royal family. Must be some kind of nickname or, or something like that, because he ain't no prince that I've ever seen. So yeah, I'm in a weird couple of weeks, guys. Really is. Weird couple of weeks. World's a strange place. Be careful. <laughs> Alright, this is Tim the Bouncer, and it's August 12th, 2015, and I've got some, some stories to tell you, right? It, it's been one hell of a night for me, you know? First of all, good news. Got to Gus up on the roof last night, sunset, surprised him, asked him to marry me. Got a cheap ass ring from Argos. <laughs> One of the advantages of dating a guy is they don't give a crap about diamonds. So, you know, nice simple 20 quid ring from Argos. Asked him to marry me. He said yes. He said yes. <laughs> yes. I'm engaged. <laughs> I'm going to get married. 
I need a fucking married man. God, I was in the day when I could do even do this. You know, things have changed so much. Fuck. Oh, God, it's such a nice day. It's so fucking sunny out. I'm just, yeah, I'm really feeling it. I'm really happy right now. So stay posted. We've got no idea of date or anything like that. We can't afford much, but that is not what is not what's important. It's not about the wedding. It's about the marriage. You know, it's about being with the one you love. And I'm going to be. Ah. So that's good news. Weird news, since I know you all love my weird stories, and I seem to be getting a lot of these weird stories lately, you know, because, shit, I don't know whether it's because I'm on the internet now or whatever, but I'm getting a lot of weird attention from weird guys. So I was working the club last night, after I asked Gus, you know, had to go work for the night, Gus was in the club, you know, having a good time, I was working the door, I was going to join him after I'd done my shift, and uh, there's this local gang that hangs around the area sometimes, and they can cause a bit of a shit trouble, tri a bit of a shit trouble. But you know, they stay out of stay out of our jurisdiction, stay out of our club. We don't care what you do. It's the police's problem, not our problem. You know. So they started causing trouble at our place last night, and this big fat guy who looked like you know some '80s reject in all his leather jacket and punk shirt and everything like that, <laughs> scary-looking fat dude. Says his name was Razors. <laughs> Razors. Jeez, what is this? <laughs> Some bad eighties gang gang movie. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, he started asking for me by name, which I was a bit creeped out by. I mean, I guess people would know me there, but as far as I know, I never pissed off anyone like that. I only pissed off any gang. Started asking for me. I uh, came out, told him it was me. What did he want? He said, "I just wanted to check you out." I'm like, "What are you?" flirting with me <laughs> didn't seem to take too kindly to that he looked me up and down there was a bit of stare down he had all of his two or three of his gang bangers hanging out around him so you know the other bouncers Massimo Andy my best mates in the world and you know my co-workers stood up stared him down told him not to start any trouble we we're gonna call the police and uh, yeah it just all went uh, it, they, they fucked off stared him down didn't want to fight, really silly didn't want to fight us, you know, not the three of us, <laughs> not me, Massimo and, Andrew, and Andy, you know, fucking kick their asses, <laughs> don't care what shit you think you know on the streets, those guys and I, we know how to fight, alright, I've been training years in MMA, you're going to go down if you take me on, alright, that wasn't the end of the night unfortunately, because then we found this absolutely crazy dude, crazy fucking bloke in the club like utterly off his rocker nuts some guy called Satchel who was wandering around asking people questions about me and like really weird questions like have they ever slept with me have they ever looked directly into my eyes you know it was all sort of like and everyone said it was freaking him out we had three different people come complain to us that he was like really weird and inappropriate so I said if he's asking questions about me I don't want to get involved with him and I asked Massimo if he could go deal with it and Massimo went to kick the guy out of the club and before he even got to him Massimo just started freaking out and the little satchel shit the guy said his name was Satchel or whatever the, the two other people this, this little weirdo just bolted out the club and just disappeared couldn't find him didn't see him leave out the door didn't see where he went he just poof, gone uh, Massimo was freaking out. It was like he'd been spiked with acid or something. He was like tripping, seeing stuff. Really <laughs> not a nice trip either. We had to sit him down in the sit him down sit him down in the ticket office and just get him, you know, a cup of tea, calm him down, get him settled, get him water, and he was all right by the end of the night. But jeez, who are, who are these fuckers coming around my club and my house, <laughs> making my life weird? I had a perfectly normal, perfectly easy life. Ah, oh well. Life always takes you by surprise. Anyway, dudes, I'm getting married. Fucking good news. See you on my next video. I'll tell you more about it.